All right, first and foremost, give all praise to you, how about Shimmy Al Shabbat? I'm giving sincere greeting to the brothers and sisters scattered across the four corners, teaching this word with sincerity and charity. I'm Brother Phoenix with Prince of Power Israelites. Uh, another short lesson for you dealing with um, Cornelius. Was Cornelius an Israelite? Was he really an Israelite? All right, and, and most consensus uh, would tell you, most camps would tell you that um, he is an Israelite. Um, but I think it's a few that teach not. I don't feel he's an Israelite. I used to, and we have to, you have to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Man. It's just part of the process of learning, of growing, um, especially as the spirit is, 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 is increased within you. The text opens up, certain things unlock, uh, certain veils are removed, um, <clears throat> and we have to read the, read the text. Um, read it for yourself, man. Read it for yourself and, and without... Um, Pre notions, you know what I'm saying. Um, a lot of times, you know, we we fall into problems where we really just, you know, we have these pre notions on the text, or we have uh, the timeline of certain things uh, wrong. It's very important to have a correct timeline on how things are going to happen uh, to make sure that we can line this thing up properly. We can go back and, you know, what I'm saying, um, do like some reverse engineering on the text when we know how, especially how the end times um, are laid out. Um, <clears throat> so Acts 10, they're going to go there, and most are going to say that, you know what I'm saying, Cornelius uh, was in an Italian band, and we'll establish that the Italian band doesn't necessarily mean he's an Italian, that he's an Edomite, but it would mean that um, he was just in the Roman army. He was a centurion. It just means he had some rank in the Roman army. <clears throat> And we know that the army was comprised of multiple nations. Whoever they conquered, they end up making them, pulling them uh, into that into that um, that military. And so, just because he's in the Roman army doesn't mean he's a Roman, but it also doesn't mean he's a Jew. Uh, they would go then to devout. He was a devout man <clears throat> among the Jews, meaning he did righteous acts among the Jews in his arms and his righteousness. Um, you had was it was a memorial. Uh, for him and what went up into the heavens um, and we'll go to that we'll correlate that to Acts 2 and 5 where those devout Jews across all nations were um, were there at Pentecost and got the fiery tongue and received the Holy Spirit and so we will say well you know we'll conclude that he had to be a Jew because he was devout and there were devout Jews there and so I get it I get it I get it but this, you know, and, and but again, when we have to do a lot of bouncing and boom, 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 we had to go all over the place. We got to go to different dictionaries. We got to go here. We got to go. When we're doing that, we really have to examine uh, what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because we, why wouldn't it just say, instead of saying he's a devout, uh, in the, why don't you say he's a devout Jew? Why is the text seemingly um, acting like it's hiding the fact that Cornelius is an Israelite, right? And so we have to go through these hoops and all this stuff and go all over the place to try to try to establish this matter. And when we do this, not saying that um, you don't have to do this sometimes, but when we do this, we really have to look at look at what's going on. We really have to look at it and try to establish this thing to make sure that everything is right, um, especially when we when, as teachers. So. To establish this, and I, and I'm on, um, you know, my stance is that he's not an Israelite. <clears throat> uh, to establish this, my stance, I'm gonna go to Acts 15. All right, I'm gonna go a few chapters, um, a few chapters over, and go to Acts 15, <clears throat> dealing with the dispute with circumcision. We can start with verse seven, Acts 15, verse seven. He says, "And when there had been much disputing." Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren. All right, that's a very key phrase there too, men and brethren. Just despite, you know what I'm saying, kind of putting a, a glitch between two people, all right. Um, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of, of the gospel and believe, okay. And so Peter it's saying it was a good while ago where God, you know what I'm saying, chose me to give that word unto these Gentiles, right? He showed me this vision. He's talking about the vision that he was showed in Cornelius, dealing with Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. 
I'm sure most would agree. If you're still here, I'm sure you would agree that uh, what Paul's speaking of right here is that God made choice among us that Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word and the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. All right. And so we see Cornelius and them uh, receiving the Holy Spirit and most of the Jews was astonished. Okay. We see that. We see that in the text. Also, we see that in Acts chapter 10. Um, let's drop down. Okay. Let's drop down a few verses and let's go to verse, um, verse 12. It says, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered and said, men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon have declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles. Again, we see in Peter, all right. This is Peter, have declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. He visited the Gentiles to take out of those Gentiles a people for his name. Okay, for his name. He, to take out a people for his name. And this was seen in Acts chapter 10 with Peter and Cornelius. All right, this is connected to that. If you still agree with me, you still here with me, you, I'm sure most would agree that that's what this is what is being spoken about uh, with Peter um, declaring that uh, there was Gentile to be taken out his name. Now, whether you feel like that's Israelites or not, most probably feel like that that was Israelites. Okay, let's continue on. And to this, agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men, all right, the remnant of men, might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, say of the Lord, who do of all these things. All right, who of my name is called and all the Gentiles who my name is called. Now, we just seen that um, Simon just chose out a people. Simon just dealt with the people who God might have put his name on, that have put his name, these Gentiles, this remnant, that he might have put his name on in Acts chapter 10. And we most feel that those, that remnant, those, that, that those people were also Israelites, were the northern kingdom a lot of times, we'll say. Um, and those called by my name, we would go to like Isaiah 48. Let's go to Isaiah 48 and verse 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, and I am also the last. We'll say that I am, my, I, that I am the called. That, that called uh, could only be Israelites. Okay, could only be Israelites. And we would go to Isaiah 43. I seen, um, I can't do this. Go to Isaiah 43. But now, say, thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that had formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Okay, and, and they use the, you know, I feel like that's not called by the Most High's name, but he, that the, the Most High actually gave us uh, that name because we are his. Um... <clears throat> But, you know, that's neither here or uh, there. But I've seen them use that and say that they're they the only ones that can be called. Only Israel's can be called. But I do, I do, see, the, I do see Isaiah 48, uh, 12 as a good precept uh, for that to be called, Israel being called to be established. Um, but the fact of the matter is, <coughs> the fact of the matter is, excuse me, and to this agrees, Acts 15, uh, 15, all right? And to this agrees the words of the prophets as it is written. Anytime we got as it is written, we got to go to where it is written. Anytime we have where it is written, we got to go to where it is written. And that will be the ultimate precept. <laughs> We can't skip over that and then go to Isaiah. We need to go to where it was written. So where it was written at? It's Amos chapter 9 <clears throat> in verse 11. Right, it says, In that day I will rise up again the tabernacle of David that is fallen and, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up the of his ruins, and I will build it 
as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Now, if we're saying that the Gentiles that are spoken about in Acts 15, you go back there after this, I will return unto David. Like these things, this is what he's saying. Uh, Simon Peter is, this is what he's concluding that Simon Peter is talking about. You know, him seeing those Gentiles, him seeing Cornelius and them receive the spirit is testament to Amos chapter 9 verse 11 where we see that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen. So we're saying that these people, these people, Cornelius being the northern kingdom, being considered a Gentile, but really an Israelite, we will be possessing them after the most high rebuilds the kingdom. We will possess them and we will possess Edom. This is what we're saying when we see this. When we when we conclude this, we're saying that we're going to possess our brothers. We're going to possess our northern kingdom brothers, and we're going to possess Edom. And understand how this Romans 12 again. It says, they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Okay, so how can we say that um, we're going to possess our, but we're going to possess Israelites in the kingdom? That's what we, that's what we gonna have out there. You know what I'm saying on the chopping block? Like that's what we gonna have out there in the in the fields, as we like to say. All right, the Most High is raising up a remnant for our possession. You missing the point? All right, the remnant gonna have to have they act in order. And Acts 15 is giving them people um, certain instructions, all right? Giving them certain instructions. And so if you, if, if you, I don't know how you can get around that. I don't know how you get past that. It's, it's like he's saying that what, what Peter witnessed is a testament to Acts 9-11. And 9-11 is saying that, that that concluded that that shows that, there, that a remnant is being raised up for our possession. For us to be, for us to possess once, once the um, the the tabernacle is being rebuilt, and that would also, and if we're saying, well, that possession, those those heathens in Amos nine and eleven are really Gentiles, are really the other nations, are not Israelites. Then you have to conclude that Cornelius was not an Israelite. Because what he did, what he was, was a testament to Amos 9 and, and 11 being fulfilled. And then them giving these lackluster uh, things that they should do um, in Acts 15 rather than, um, you know what I'm saying, having to get circumcised and do all of these other things. But they should just do this, do this, do this, do this, and then the Moses uh, word will be... Uh, read in the synagogue so just look at that like you, you can't get around i don't know how you get around that and i don't know what kind of possession you think the most high is going to give unto you uh these folks supposed to cleave unto us uh we're supposed to teach these people he's going to have a righteous rim ain't going to be no darn a uh, wicked um that's going to make it in there you know what i'm saying it's not going to be wicked but we have to again we have to understand the timeline how do we get to the point where if you understand the timeline, how do we get to the point where we have the millennial reign? And then if you understand Revelation, this is just, just some just some, uh, some heavy state. Um, if you're a babe, just go ahead and just end the video. But how do we have in Revelations? And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this are, you know, they, they're not, they, they, they some heavy um, scholarly brothers. So in Revelations, after the millennial reign, we have all of these people the numbers of the sands of the sea bucking back um and trying to war against um the messiah how do we get to that point without these people being there how do we get to that point why would we be a royal priesthood why would we need a priesthood in the millennial kingdom and why would we be a ruling priesthood if we don't, if, if we, who going to be sacrificing? Is we going to be sacrificing? 
they gonna be the uncorruptible. We gonna be sacrificed. Like who's gonna be sacrificed? Like why are the sacrifices needed? Why are they coming up bringing their sacrifices? So all of these things, all if you, we understand these things, then we can come back into some reverse engineering. We gotta learn, unlearn, relearn. All right, that's part of the growth process. I hope this thing was edifying to the Bible. Like I said we don't have to go and jump all around the text. You can go to Acts 15. We see everybody having the. We see the council there, uh, happen about what we should do with these Gentiles. Um, also, also I, I leave with this too. It's a Samaritan woman. All right, a lot of times we say, well, you know, what I'm saying the Northern Kingdom didn't know who they were and they lost themselves. But the Samaritan woman understood that this well was Jacob's well and that that was her forefather, right? And we worship when we and she understood that we worship somewhere and we worshiped in this mountain, but we really we 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 no, we ain't supposed to be there. Right. And if you really know the history, you know, we didn't allow them to come back to the temple. We didn't allow them to come back and worship. Even when we was rebuilding the temple after the Babylonian captivity, we didn't want any we didn't want their help. And so it got to a point where we had we that when we pushed them out and they had to start worshiping somewhere else and worshiping other deities and, and, and et cetera. All right, but this Samaritan woman, she understood this, and I'm sure that a lot of under, other people still understood that they were uh, the children of Israel, but um, they had been cut off and pushed out uh, by the Jews, uh, by the Southern Kingdom, uh, by the Most High, ultimately, um, and that they wanted nothing to do with them, and so they started just doing it uh, themselves in whatever way they can do it, um, and, and that happened, but we can't say that they just completely just didn't know who they were, uh, especially in Samarita, uh, Samaria, uh, more so than anything, because we had the Samaritan woman, we have that witness that actually knew that that her forefathers, uh, Jacob, built this built this particular well here. Um, but again, hope that thing was edifying to the body, man. Um, it's just going to be hard to deal around. If we're going to get around it, we'll have to get around the, the, the Amos 9-11. That's just, that's just point blank period. Acts 15, 15. If we go to Amos 9-11 and 12, if that's if you can get around that, um, just put it in the comments. If Just put it in the comments uh, what that what that means. All right, what that means. And if that is Gentiles, if we're saying that that is Gentiles as in the other nations, then we have to conclude that Cornelius was an Israelite because he was a testament. As the text says, he was a testament. That whole event was a testament to Amos uh, 9 and 11. Uh, again, with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Make sure y'all like, sub, subscribe, share this video.